Hey folks, here's a spot I'm about to take some surrogate soil from. I'm going to do a humic and fulvic acid extraction from this material right here. Um, you can see it's like really, really, really old wood chip compost. There's some roots that are in it from whatever that's growing over here. Maybe onions next door, over there, over there. But anyway, I'm going to take a little bit of this and it's going to go in my coffee pot. Check this out. Just one little handful, that's all that's necessary. Just like I'm brewing coffee. Basically just dropped it in there. Then put it right in there. There's even a couple ants in there. Yeah, they're not gonna like this. Just click it on and let it roll. In case y'all were wondering, this is not my coffee maker from the house. This is part of my compost tea making process. I guess while we're steeping, I can tell you a little bit about what's going on here. I'm using the hot water to run through this very hummusy, almost, almost completely broken down compost. And really all that's required is you treat it just like it's a regular bag of tea or coffee perking process. So, you know, you put it in there, the hot water is run through it, and the humic and fulvic acids just basically come right out of the media. And they'll be in that solution down there. Even if it's a low concentration, it's going to be a healthy concentration. It's so easy to do. I'm already out here using hot water to treat a couple of ant hills to push them just a little bit further away from where I need a little piece. And um, this is just like one more run through. It's not a very big deal. I can do two runs and I can get an entire gallon. Okay, here you can see I ran this one and I'll do it one more time and maybe a time after that to make a full gallon. And it's just sitting in this bath of kind of cool water, you know chilling waiting for me to add this but the fact that it's not as dark as compost tea doesn't really mean much the color is not necessarily an indication of the acids although when I do look under the glass at uh, humic solids you can actually see them and they kind of have this little bit of a tan or a gold color to them just like what you see coming out of the coffee pot pretty cool huh so just in case y'all are wondering, this can be done with, you know, some pretty old compost that you have laying around. And this has the advantage of actually sanitizing it at the same time as it's extracting the fulvic and humic acids. And it has the extra added advantage of really essentially being almost completely filtered. I, I wouldn't consider sending this through like a 5 micron filter at this point. It's, it's more than uh, sufficient for my needs. It's basically just going to get mixed in with some compost tea and a tiny little bit of fish emulsion so I can feed my plants. That's it. It's, it ends up being a truly, truly a gentle uh, elixir <clears throat> that allows for the nutrients that are in the compost teas to be taken up and into the plants through the stomata much more efficiently. And uh, I can do this, say, early in the morning or just before the sun sets and there is no stress or strain to the plants. So while this is steeping, why don't we have a look at some of the exudates that I get from my compression composter? So here you have it. On the left, you can see an example of the exudates that I get from the big blue barrel. On the right, you can see this, my, or I should say my version of a humic and fulvic acid extraction. Um, you can tell the difference in color. It's pretty significant. The exudates that were compressed out do tend to have more solids because it really wasn't filtered. It was just filtered through, you know, a cotton cloth above a... Uh... Oh, I'll show you. This is what it looks like after I'm done sort of um, rough filtering or coarse filtering the exudates that come out of the, the blue bin. You know, those are all the plants that I grow in the season that I grow them in. And when the rain washes through 
and the compression from the weight on top is forcing down on them. They put this beautiful, beautiful brown um, liquid that looks like this. Okay. Look at it, we're almost done. There they are, complete with their abbreviations or acronyms. So that I know that if I ask someone to come grab a gallon of fulvic and humic acids, they won't grab the exudates and vice versa. Keeps things simple around here. Nice. See the color kind of deepens up. So what kind of rate are we using with this stuff? Honestly, if you're a new gardener, you should always, or you're new to this part of gardening, you should always start out with a fairly dilute amount and then watch the reaction of your plants. Since I'm pretty much continuously using this and compost teas, and then on occasion I use this, my plants are essentially adapted to it. And the plants that I grow, I tend to grow plants that are complemented by these actions, as opposed to growing plants that say, hey, you know, whatever your convention is, Creedmoor, we don't really like it. If that happens with a plant, I usually select, select another plant, just to keep things simple, keep things manageable, and keep it so that whatever methods I am using are fairly consistent across the board. And look at that, there you can see it. Our percolation is done, yay. Okay, so we're gonna go from here into there. Super simple.